Good morning everybody and welcome to another Sunday at Surrey Chapel. It's great to have you with us. My name is Annie. So we're going to play a game to start off with. I want you to try and see if you can figure out what I have in my pocket. Okay, I've got an object, I've got a thing in my pocket. I'm going to give you some clues, three clues, and you need to try and guess what it is that's in my pocket. Okay, here's clue number one. Number one. When this thing in my pocket gets bigger, it's going to be stronger than a brick wall. Can you guess what it is yet? Number two, after a while, this thing that's in my pocket is going to be taller than a house. Can you think what it is yet? And number three, this thing that's in my pocket is really, 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 really tiny. But at one point, after a while, it's going to be able to offer a home to animals and protection. What do you think it is? I think you might have guessed what it is. It's something that was going to grow into a tree eventually. But which type of tree specifically? Here's one final clue. If you eat something that comes from this tree, that's made out of what comes from this tree, it's very, very spicy. And this tree grows as wide as it does grow tall. What could it be? Would you like to see what I have in my pocket? Here you go. I don't even know if you can see that. It's so tiny. There you go. That is a tiny mustard seed. That mustard seed can grow into a massive, huge tree. Do you believe that? Do you think that a massive tree can come from that tiniest of seed? It looks a bit impossible, doesn't it? Well, Jesus says, yes, it can. Time is all that's needed. Let's read what Jesus says. Mark chapter 4, verses 30 to 34. Then Jesus said, how can I show you what the kingdom of God is like? What story can I use to explain it? The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The mustard seed is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. But when you plant this seed, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. It produces large branches. Even the wild birds can make nests in it and be protected from the sun. Jesus used many stories like these to teach them. He taught them all that they could understand. He always used stories to teach them. But when he and his followers were alone together, Jesus explained everything to them. So Jesus told a story about something so teeny tiny that if you dropped it on the floor, it would be lost. You couldn't find it. In fact, I've lost a couple while filming this. Can you guess the size of this tiny seed? It's less than two millimetres. It's so minuscule. So even though this seed looks tiny and fragile and insignificant and not very impressive, something amazing happens when we plant it in the ground. When it's put in the ground, nothing can stop it. It just keeps growing and growing and becomes a massively tall tree. Nothing can stop it from doing its thing, even though it's a tiny, tiny seed. All it needs is time to grow into a massive tree. When it grows, it can grow up to 30 feet tall, which is more than five times of me standing on top of each other. It's taller than a house. It's taller than a lot of other trees in our garden. Because did you see what the Bible passage said? It said it was the largest of all garden plants. It protects, it gives shelter, and we could even make furniture from it if we wanted to. Do you believe that could all come from this tiny, tiny seed? And time is all that's needed. But what on earth is Jesus talking about mustard seeds and trees? What do you think he means? Is Jesus giving us gardening tips on how to grow a really tall tree, do you think? Or is he telling us that we should eat lots of mustard because it's very tasty? No, neither of those things. So what does Jesus say that he's talking about? Did you spot it right at the start? He said he's trying to explain what the kingdom of God is like, what his family is like, what God's family is like. And he uses a mustard seed to explain it. When Jesus first started out in his ministry and telling people about God, how many people was there? There was just him. It was only him. A tiny mustard seed just starting out. But then Jesus called the disciples. The mustard seed was growing. 
And then more crowds started to follow Jesus, more and more people. But when Jesus died, he still only had about 120 followers. Only about 120 people believed and followed Jesus. That's still like a tiny tree, isn't it? Even though Jesus was teaching and doing miracles. How would the disciples feel at that point, do you think, when hardly anyone was truly following Jesus? How would they feel about that? Maybe concerned, maybe disappointed, maybe sad. But Jesus told them this parable of the mustard seed so that they'd understand. The plan wasn't failing or taking a turn for the worst. It was just at the start of its growing journey. So Jesus told his disciples this parable to reassure them and said, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing with God's kingdom and it would grow. Just give it time. So what do you think happened when Jesus died? At that point, he only had 120 followers, like we said. So what do you think happened to God's kingdom next? Did it just disappear and wilt away and the seed didn't really turn into anything? Is that what happened? No. Can you shout out what has happened to it? Well, if we think of it like that tree that was planted in the ground, that tree has grown and grown and continues to grow and God's kingdom has grown and spread over the whole world. On this map, we can see that God's kingdom spread to Ethiopia, North Africa, Greece, Asia, Italy, France, England, Turkey, India, North and South America, Russia, Africa, Australia. It traveled everywhere, the whole world. It grew just like the mustard seed would, just like Jesus said it would. In the world today, there are about 619 million Christians, people who love and follow Jesus. That's amazing, isn't it? Just like that mustard seed would grow into a massive, massive tall tree, God's kingdom has grown and grown and grown and reached all across the world. How do you feel in your church? Do you feel like you're part of something tiny? Does it feel like you're just a tiny mustard seed? If you do feel that way, just remember that one day you will arrive in heaven and you will see God's full kingdom, fully grown, and you won't believe it. There'll be people from all over the world, all over history, united together, and God's kingdom will be huge, just like that mustard tree. A minuscule, tiny seed grown to a 30 foot tall tree, and the whole church united forever. And do you know what happens when a mustard tree is fully grown? It produces its own mustard seeds. Look at all those mustard seeds. I don't know how many are in there, but there must be hundreds. And each of these, when planted, can then turn into its own mustard tree and then produce even more mustard seeds. And it just keeps on going and going and keeps on growing and growing. That is just like God's kingdom, isn't it? It never stops growing. Nothing can stop God's kingdom. It will produce more seeds and more trees and keep on growing, all because of God. And we are evidence of God's kingdom today. We are all in God's kingdom if we know him and love him. We are in God's family. Jesus lived 2,000 years ago in a whole different country and part of the world than where we live today. But God's kingdom has still reached us and is still growing. So we can see the evidence as we look around today that God's kingdom is growing and still going because here we are knowing Jesus and living for Jesus 2,000 years later. So do you think that the disciples needed to be worried that God's kingdom wasn't growing and that maybe it didn't look like they had hoped it to back when they were alive? Do you think they needed to be worried about that? No, they did not. Imagine if they could see God's kingdom today if they could see all the 619 million people who love and trust Jesus and are in God's kingdom. So if God's kingdom is like a mustard seed, what does that mean? Well, it means that it's strong. It means that it's powerful. It means that nothing can stop it. It's significant and it's amazing. And it won't stop growing. A bit like we can see in this experiment. So as we go away today, let's go away feeling encouraged, amazed, wowed, grateful to be in God's kingdom. 
There is nothing that can stop it from growing. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? And we are a part of it. Let's thank God together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we are in your kingdom. Thank you that there's nothing that can stop your kingdom from growing. Thank you for all the millions of people that are in your family. Thank you for how much you have grown it, all because of Jesus. We pray that we would feel amazed about that today and know that we are part of something amazing. Amen. If you check the website, there's some sheets and activities for you on there. Have a great day. Bye.